Hello, my name is Hamlet Darcy. I work for Canoe Engineering, and this is a screencast about Makito. I'm going to show you how to create mock objects with Makito, and also some of the basics of stubbing behavior using the then return, then throw, and then answer API. So I have a small example here. This is a sample user service. This is a just a plain old Java object. It has a user manager, so it's a facade over this, and the logic is very simple. There's one method on the object called get user count, and it just forwards the request on to the manager object. Any exceptions that occur and it return negative one. So the question is how to get this class under test, under a unit test. And the best way to do this for unit testing is to somehow mock out the user manager object. This is what Makito is used for, for mocking out dependencies. I'm going to create a new unit test, user service test. And the most basic thing you can do is just create a new mock object and stub out some behavior. So I'm going to create a new test. This is a demo of the then return method. So let's create a new user service. And oops, user service. And what we want to happen is um, maybe 50 users are in the service. So we have get user count and it returns 50. Get some of the imports out of the way. I like to do an on-demand static import. So this is our test. We want to create a new user service and we want that service to tell us that there are 50 users in the service. Make this font bigger. All right. So to do this, we need to mock out this user manager. You could create a new instance, but it's better to use EasyMock to do this. Create local variable. How you do it is makito.mock and then the name of the class, or the class literal to be exact. And at this point, we have a unit test. Uh, it won't pass because there are certainly get user count will not return 50. But to make it return 50, the API for this is makito.win manager.getUserCount then return 50. So it's a fluent interface. It sounds a little like the English spoken word. And at this point, if we run this test, we should have a green bar. All right, so we've created a mock object. We've mocked out some behavior, and we've, we've run our test. We don't have any of the exception handling covered yet. That's our next step. Create a new test. Um, then throw is the API that we want to use um, to create uh, an exception. So in this case, for the then throw method, uh, the exception case, as I said earlier, is going to be negative one. If an exception occurs, negative one is returned. So our passing unit test here will be that on get user count, we get a negative one. So we're going to create that mock again. Makito.mock, user manager. And then instead of a then return, we're going to use then throw. So when manager.get user count, then throw, and you can pass in a throw new runtime exception. Okay. So when this runs, when get user service is invoked by the user service, I'm sorry, when get user count is invoked by the user service, it will the user manager will throw an exception and we'll get negative one uh, back. Okay, so that's the then throw API. We needed to stub out exceptions. The last thing I want to show you is an is then answer. This is a, this is a way to trap state and have a stateful mock. So let's create a new test then answer, and let's just copy and paste the template. And what we want our unit test to be is that the first time get user count is called, it returns one. The second time, it returns two. And the third time, it returns three. This is the passing unit test. Okay, And of course, it'll fail right now if we run it. That's clear. Uh, what we need to do to trap state and return one, two, and then three, one way to do this 
is with an answer object. There are other ways to do this, but I want to demonstrate the answer object with this example. Makito.mock manager dot get user count and we're whoops. So when get I'm sorry, not mock. When. So when get user count is called we're going to then answer, and the parameter for then answer is an answer object. So it's a new answer. It's an anonymous inner class. And once you have the anonymous inner class, not answer, is answer. Import class, implement method. And once you have the anonymous inner class, then you can trap whatever state you want. So we can just keep a counter in here, turn up. Oh return plus plus count and if we have that as a field this should pass. So what's going to happen here is the first time get user count is called one will be returned, the second time two and the third time three. Uh, the parameter is the method parameters that your object are invoked with so this answer is really used when you want to make decisions about return values. So if we run this it should pass. Correct. So the screencast is, is ended. We've seen the then return method, we've seen the then throw method, and we've seen the trapping state with the then answer method. Thanks for listening, and hopefully there will be another screencast with some more advanced usages later. Thanks for listening. Bye.